You are back in business with me, Harsha Subramaniam. We put the spotlight on ONGC. I am joined by Sudhir Vasudeva, Chairman of ONGC, on the business outlook for his company, Mr. Vasudeva. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, let me start by this this whole debate about export parity pricing. The oil ministry is in principle agreed to reviewing uh, the finance ministry's contention on export parity, parity pricing. What to your mind uh, is the ramification of this move? See, this question is more pertinent for uh, uh, OMCs who are get, going to be affected by this export parity pricing vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the trade parity pricing which is presently prevalent. Uh, but for us, the ramification is in terms of, of subsidy burden. Uh, what is what is being reported uh, in uh, the media is that in case this export parity pricing is applied, uh, the burden of subsidy would come down uh, as far as the government is concerned. But in case uh, the OMCs are affected, maybe the uh, upstream companies would be asked to, to compensate for that. So that's our worry. Sure. Um, you know, we've seen... We've seen oil marketing companies pretty much uh, um, increase increase prices regularly. Uh, you bear the lion's share of that burden, Mr. Mr. Vasudev. How much will it be right now, and how do you see that reducing going forward? See, I understand today the uh, under recovery in uh, in diesel is slightly less than four rupees. It is about three rupees seventy pesos. So it will take about uh, at a rate of forty to fifty pesos. It will take about eight or nine months for this to to be uh, completely. Uh, removed from this, but the, the worry is uh, the way it is being reported that uh, take the next year's calculation of uh, recovery or under recovery is of the order of 80,000 crores, and uh, what is indicated is that the government would bear only 20,000 crores, and the ENP companies would still be asked to pay 60,000 crores, which uh, we are supposed to pay this year. So this is this is not really you know rational. My earnest request uh, to the uh, to the government and Ministry of Finance would be that this should be pro rata. In case this year uh, government has borne about 1 lakh crores and we have paid 60,000 crores. So it should be in that ratio the next year as well. Uh, point taken, Mr. Barkov. Uh, what, what, you understand that you are in conversation with uh, Shell to sell some of your stake in your deep water blocks. Could you give us an update? Is this the beginning of a strategic relationship that you intend to have with Shell? All I have said, uh, and I'll reiterate that, is that we are discussing the opportunities, the possible opportunities in upstream, midstream, and downstream. We have not talked per se about sale, sale of stakes to to any companies. But I mean, if it comes to that stage, I mean, I have always maintained that in case of deep water, what we are looking for is a technology. Uh, I mean, so that we, we go up on the learning curve faster. But I mean, if this kind of technology is not available for sale and somebody wants to put his good money uh, along with us, why not? I mean, if this will mitigate risk for us all the more. So in, in that context, even if Shell is willing to give us the technology and they also want to pick up stakes in, in one of the deep water blocks, we would be willing to consider that. So I understand that there have been reports that the West Bengal government is selling stake in Haldia Petrochemicals. Uh, would you be keen on buying a stake? We are examining that. The, the expression of interest is due on the 10th of June. We are examining whether it is worth uh, in, uh, thing, uh, putting our expression of interest there, there as well or not. Would, then, would this be through um, ONGC or would this be through MRPL? Uh, there, have been, there have been reports about the strategy group cautioning bidders against actually bidding in, in this because there's a dispute on some part of, of the stake. What is your assessment of this? We are aware of that and we will factor all this uh, while we make this decision and uh, the decision as to whether ONGC will, will bid or MRPL will bid. I mean, all that is, it is uh, inconsequential at this stage. I mean, we are one, one group of companies, so I mean, that, that decision we can take as and when uh, there is some clarity on whether we are going to bid and whether we are uh, successful in that bid or not. Okay. We also have learned that uh, you are looking at bidding for the Mozambique ga gas field, Mr. Uh, what, which is supposed to be extremely rich in reserves. Uh, is that accurate that you are working with Oil India on this deal? Yes, we have bid for uh, this 20% stake, uh, uh, which is the 10% of NRDARCO and 10% of Videocon, which they want to divest. Uh, yes, I mean, I would not like to divulge anything more at this stage uh, because of confidentiality of uh, the matter. Sure. Uh, a word about gas pricing. The Rangarajan Committee is expected to revise gas prices upwards from the $4.2 that you are currently selling at. 
Are you expecting a significant increase? Do you have any ballpark numbers with which you are working? I mean, it is, being, it is, I mean, any increase in price is good for the producers. I mean, today we are uh, producing about 65 million cubic meter of gas per day and uh, predominantly our uh, gas is APM gas and we are only getting 4.2 dollars per million BTU. And this gas, you know, like it is coming from all these oil fields, if the oil production is falling, the associated gas production also will fall. So it, it will not be possible to replenish this APM gas at this uh, same cost of, uh, of uh, production or, uh, you know, at same pricing of, of the gas. The, the new gas which is going to come will be coming from deep waters and the frontier areas, so the cost of production will increase. Even for us to, to make any capex plans uh, or to, to invest funds into this, we'll have to see. In, unless until we have increased gas prices, uh, the, the projects will not become viable. So the, the more the price, uh, the better it is for producers, but we understand the, the sensitivities which are there as regards uh, the power tariff going up or uh, the subsidy for fertilizer sure. going up. Sure. So we, we are just waiting with bated breath. One final question, Mr. Vastev. You know, uh, with all these plans in the pipeline in terms of acquisitions, or are you, are you planning to raise capital in some form this fiscal? Yes. Uh, see, today we have uh, some uh, surplus and reserves uh, as far as ONGC group is concerned. But, I mean, if we give this loan to OVL, uh, let's say, I mean, they bought this equity of Azerbaijan, that the, the interest cost would be more uh, in case we give this loan to OVL, uh, the rupee loan, uh, this thing, interest would be more. So, therefore, they went to the market and they have, uh, this thing, they have sold the bonds for five years tenure and uh, ten years tenure and raised $800 million. And similarly now, if you are successful in this Mozambique or if the other islands which are there in the fire, if we succeed in that, we'll have to go to the debt market and raise the debts and we'll see how to invest the, the, the balance surplus and reserves in, in the country as far as ONGC is concerned. All right, sir, we leave it there. Many thanks for joining us sir, with your views. That was the chairman of ONGC talking about his business outlook.